Mechanical watches serve a few purposes these days. They can demonstrate wealth, show style, celebrate an event or a milestone. Of course, way down that list for most people is telling the time. I've been looking at this Tutama Grandflieger airport chronograph and asking, and what is this watch for? Style, wealth, celebration, I could see an argument for those. But when I look at this watch on my wrist and ask myself, why? The first thing I think is, because watches are f***ing awesome, that's why. Of course, there's a lot more going on here than just because. There's a rich history and there's an impressive quality. And that stuff does matter to me. But the enjoyment I get from wearing this watch is far less cerebral and much more basic. I wouldn't expect that'd be the case for most people, but that's where I'm at. That history goes back to 1927 and the founding of Tutama, but it wasn't until 1941, during World War II, that the Grand Flieger line practically started. That's when Tutama started producing the UROFA 59 movement, and with it, the first ever German flyback chronograph watch. At the time, they called the complication a tempo stop. That original Tutama pilot led to the modern Grand Flieger line, with its vintage-inspired ribbed bezel and cathedral hands. And it also led to the Grand Flieger Airport line that this watch is a part of. Same functions and same specs as the Grand Flieger, but with a more modern style. And what are those specs? If you can't tell already, this watch is not for the faint of heart nor faint of wrist. The Airport Chronograph is 43mm in diameter and 16mm thick. It's also about 51mm long. For those of you who like watches in the 38 to 40 millimeter range, I'm not gonna try to convince you to consider this watch. It's probably not for you, but for people like me who enjoy some heft once in a while, I think you might find the design well considered for these dimensions. First is the length. A 51 millimeter length on a 43 millimeter diameter is pretty reasonable. On my seven inch wrist, I think the watch sits nicely. Second, it helps that the bracelet can drop straight down from the lugs, meaning that 51 millimeters is actually how it wears. Third, the narrow bezel adds to the visual size of the watch. Compare this to the Rolex Sea Dweller. Both watches are 43 millimeters in diameter and have rotating bezels, but the difference in bezel and dial widths really affects how large the watch looks. The fourth aspect about how this beast wears is the bracelet itself. The airport chronograph uses a president style bracelet. That means there are three parts to each link and the links are relatively short. It also means that the links are fully articulating. Each piece of the link has a joint. Because of that, the bracelet feels very supple and flexible, almost like a really nice strap. Put it all together and this watch wears comfortably. It's not going to fit under a dress cuff, but if you're trying to wear a big chronograph with a dress shirt, You've got bigger issues, and we should talk about it. There are a few references of this airport chronograph. This is the black dial on a bracelet, and it lists for 5500 US dollars. I've seen these brand new for much less, but I'll let you find out where. The black dial can also be had on a Kevlar strap. There's also a reference with a blue dial and a green dial. Both of these only come on straps. The black dial references, though, have two differences compared to the color references. One big difference and one little. The little difference is that this reference removes the day of the week complication and just keeps the date. Personally, I find the day of the week display is pretty useless. If I truly forget what day of the week it is, either something's gone terribly wrong or wonderfully right. The big difference is that the black dial references are certified according to the DIN 8319 standard. Being a casual observer of German watches, I'd heard of DIN 8319 before, but I'd never investigated it. Turns out it's pretty damn impressive. DIN stands for Deutsches Institut für Normung, in English, German Institute for Standards, and the 8319 specification is for chronometer timepieces. It's similar to the Swiss COSC standard, but it's actually a bit more stringent. 
Watches are tested for accuracy at the Glashütte Observatory in five positions and multiple temperatures. They have to keep an average daily variation of better than minus four to plus six seconds. This is all very similar to the Swiss COSC certification. But DIN adds two more requirements. One, watches must have a hacking second. And two, movements must be tested once cased in the watch. With COSC certification, movements can be tested on their own, outside of a watch. The DIN standard is similar to how Rolex does their superlative chronometer certification. A final requirement is that at least 55% of the movement must be assembled in Glashütte, Germany. Learning about this standard really made me think differently about the Airpark chronograph. There are a lot of watches that look similar or use similar movements, but the DIN8319 certification puts this watch in a different category. I say similar movement, not same. You can probably tell by the dial layout that this watch uses a Valju 7750 movement as a base. But with all the adjustments required to make this chronometer certified, Tutama is probably justified in naming it as their own and putting their literal seal on it. In gold, no less. Tutama refers to this movement as the Caliber 320. And I'm glad Tutama put in the extra effort to make it visible through the case back. The Tutama Grand Flieger Airport Chronograph can serve a lot of purposes maybe as many as there are wrists. Its size could make a statement about your style. Its lineage can speak to your interest in history or military flight. And its technical specs might reflect your love for mechanical things. There's a bit of all that for me, but more than anything, this watch just reminds me how much I like watches. Because watches are fucking awesome.